Hi, I'm Wendy, trail named Scroggin, and today I'm going to talk to you about my Appalachian Trail through hike gear. Yay! Gear video, finally. Um, I'm going to break it down into, I think, two parts. So um, just for the sake of not making it a 45 minute long video. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about my big three and my electronics and my food, uh, food system. And I thought I'd come to you from inside today because it's about, it's 9 million degrees outside here in Australia. And I went out for a um, shakedown hike this morning and I'll insert a little video clip of that. It was pretty entertaining. Oh my God, there's 10,000 flies and it's 9 million degrees. Because it's a summer here and summer in the outback means tons of flies and orb spider season. So um, there are spider webs everywhere and, and not just your average ordinary spider webs. These are giant <laughs> sized spider webs uh, with giant spiders. Completely harmless though. The idea that everything in the outback can kill you is not true. Um, most things can, but not everything. So anyway, uh, before I ramble anymore, this is completely unscripted, unlike my other uh, two videos. So um, I will try not to ramble and stay on track. All right, so for my first piece of gear, uh, my backpack, right? Everybody, everybody is talking about their backpacks and rightly so, we're gonna be carrying it for 2,200 miles. Um, and I, I love it. So mine's the Gasmer Gear Mariposa. Um, it is in the lovely forest green color, um, just because I like the color better than the traditional blue. Um, I've had it for about almost two years now, maybe 18 months. Um, I really love it. It's super comfortable. Um, I do have the Gossamer Gear um, stuff, um, waterproof liner. Um, it's worked great. Like, there's holes in it now because I've actually used it for, like, probably 15 hikes or so, like backpacking hikes. Um, and it's held up. I, I haven't been really rough on it, so we'll see. I will definitely get a new one before I start the trail. Um, and then I've added a water bottle holder from Etsy. So uh, I, I did buy the Gossamer Gear water bottle holder, um, but I found that it's actually pretty cumbersome. And when you put a liter bottle um, in front, it, basically comes up to your face and it's right in your in your nose all the time. So I went with a smaller water bottle. So this one um, holds a 700 liter uh, bottle instead of the liter bottle. Um, and then I have the Thermodrop um, thermometer on the pack. Uh, today it was reading 99 degrees when I went out. It was really, really hot. It probably wasn't 99, but I'd say it was 94, 95 degrees today, crazy. But hey, I'm hiking mostly in the summer in on the east coast of the US, so I gotta be prepared. No whinging, no whinging allowed. Um, and then uh, I'll talk about my umbrella, but I, I am carrying an umbrella, so on the pack I do have the Gossamer Gear umbrella clamp. I'm a big fan of umbrellas, I know some people don't like them and think they're burdensome, especially on the AT in the Green Tunnel. I'll see how it goes. I really like it. I like how it keeps you mostly dry, but especially in the summer, you don't have to wear a rain jacket where you wind up being a, in a sweat box with your rain jacket on. Um, so the umbrella allows you that allows that ventilation and still keeps you from getting completely soaked. And then I did upgrade upgrade my sit pad in the pack. So I have the, the airflow pad. I really like it. It's a little bit more robust than the pad that it comes with the Mariposa. Um, so yeah, I did upgrade with the double D. As he says, for a double dose of this pimping. Yeah, I went there, I went there. Um, I think that covers everything on the pack. Oh, and then I do have like just a carabiner and a couple safety pin so I can clip things on, dry things out. So safety pins, great for a lot of different things. Oh, and then also I do have, because the Mariposa is not water resistant, no pack is waterproof, 
but um, it will get wet. So in addition to the pack liner, and then I'll also have stuff sacks in my pack, but I do have a Z-Pax um, pack cover. Super lightweight, Dyneema, easy to put on. So um, I have that for my pack. All right, so sleep system time. I went, because I am hiking mostly in the summer months, and I do have fall gear, um, which I'll go over in part two, but for my summer gear, which is, will be most of my hike, I have an Enlightened Equipment um, Enigma quilt. Um, it is rated 50 degrees. I know most people go with the 40 degree quilt in the summertime. I went with the 50 degree, but I did get the 950 um, stuffing. Um, I like it. I've used it, again, you know, we live in the outback, so it, it doesn't get, well, I don't want to say it doesn't get cold. It does get cold in the winter, but like, I've been comfortable in this, um, but I also do have a Sea to Summit reactor liner with it, um, which I think in the summer will be perfect just in case, just if it gets like, if it's really hot, I can just have a little something to, to cover myself up. Um, but then if I need the extra warmth because it's only a 50 degree bag, I have the, the you know, rated about t extra 10 degrees or so. So I have that. And then for under my, um, uh, well, actually, let me go over my Thermarest. So I have a Thermarest, Thermarest Uberlite short. I know not the most comfortable or the most silent. These things are really super noisy. Um, and they've gotten mixed reviews. I think there's, it's an R value of like 2.5. But again, I'm hiking in the summer months. So this is what I'm going to start with. Um, it's not perfect. It's, it's. I would definitely say it's not comfortable, especially since I have the short one, but I am short. I'm 5'3", um, and I use my pack uh, at, to, on my feet, so that's how I sleep anyway. So it works for me, but, you know, I don't think anybody gets a great night's sleep in, in, on the floor, <laughs> in their tent, on, you know, on the ground. Um, so it'll, I'll maybe do. So it works. I've tried it out many, many shakedowns, so that's what I'm going with. Um, I also have the Thermarest inflator uh, pump sack, stuff sack, um, just because it's really easy to blow up that way, and it's just, you know, be better practice than trying to blow it up yourself, because you can get um, mildew and stuff and mold in your, in your sleeping pad if you try to, if you blow it up all the time yourself. So I'm doing that. Um, and then I do have the Gossamer Gear uh, eighth uh, pad. So this is like, again, a super utilitarian um, pad. You can use it as a sit pad, even though I do have the, the sit pad in my pack. But this, I'd be mostly using this uh, underneath my sleep system, underneath my pad, so it doesn't slip around in my tent. Um, and just adds that extra little protection to if I do wind up sleeping in a shelter, which I may sometimes, uh, I'll put this down to protect my, uh, my, my pad. And then for my pillow, yes, I do have a pillow. Um, it is the Hyperlight Stuff Sack Pillow. Um, it's really nice. It's got the fleece, um, so it's nice and soft to sleep on. Um, it's super light. Um, obviously, you just put your clothes in there or whatever, and that becomes your pillow. Um, so for the for my to hold my pillow in place, because I know like experience, and I think most people have experienced this, right? When you're laying down, it inevitably falls off your sleeping pad. It just never stays put. Um, so I have a little basically a stretch, stretchy elect, elect, uh, elastic band um, that I put around the, the stuff sack pillow around my sleeping pad and it stays in place pretty well and, and it doesn't move. So I like that this system, it's worked for me. Um, it doesn't like pop the pad or anything like that. It's not like super tense where it's gonna break it, break the sleeping pad or deflate it. Um, so yeah. So that's what I'm what I'm doing. All right, moving along to my my cook system. Although it's not really a cook system, I am cold soaking. Um, again, you know, some people are like, "Oh God, cold soaking is terrible." I'm hiking again, mostly in the summer. 
the idea of cooking a hot meal when it's going to be 90 degrees and 100% humidity is not appealing in any way. Um, I enjoy cold soaking. I've tried it many times now. I actually have a bunch of different recipes um, that I'll share with you guys in another video before I start. Um, so I'm a fan of cold soaking. Um, and, and honestly, when it's that hot out, my experience has been it's really not cold soaking because the time you eat it, it's actually warm because it's so warm out. So for my cold soaking jar, I uh, just have a light smith. I know most people use Talenti, Talenti uh, cups, but I just got a, a light smith, support local uh, small business. Um, so light smith uh, jar, and then I just have like a half of, I, lit I actually, uh, cut, a, um, I think this is a sea to summit, one of the basically just chamois cloth rags. Um, so I cut that in half and that's what I'll be using to wipe it out. And then I have a sea to summit spork. Yes, it's titanium. Yes, it's gritty on your teeth and all that, but I am just not that picky. I really don't care. So it does the job. It fits in the container really well because again, I don't have a deep deep container like the, the mountain house meals or whatever other meals. Um, so it works, it works really well. All right, so probably the most controversial item in my pack is the RSAC. Um, I have the RSAC major. Um, so I haven't had time, I haven't had a chance to actually test this out on the east coast of the US. Um, I've used it plenty of times in Australia, but we don't have bears in Australia, uh, unless you consider drop bears a bear, but <laughs> but seriously, we just have mice. Um, I have, they haven't got, haven't, haven't chewed in this, but haven't really had a, much of an opportunity to do that either. Um, so I'm going to use this. I, I think a, a bear can actually is really the best option. Um, and I was wrestling whether I should take a bear can or not. Um, in the end, I decided to go with a little bit of weight savings and with the air sac. Um, so you can see, I we think actually we changed the uh, rope of the air sac a little bit, so we added Dyneema rope. Um, I'm still playing around with this, but like my thought is, um, right when these get when it gets rainy, these get very heavy. You know, people have said it just becomes this just lead weight when it's heavy. Um, so the times that I'm not going to be in a uh, shelter with a uh, bear box or a, or a bear hang, um, bear cable rather, um, which I think most of the time I'm going to try to do that because it makes sense to do that. But at the, the times where I am stealth camping um, and there's a chance of rain, which is the Appalachian Trail is pretty, pretty much every night, um, I did get a Dyneema. Um, food bag. So my thought is essentially I'm going to put my Ursac in the Dyneema food bag that's got my initials on it. Um, so that, and it's glow in the dark too. Um, so basically when it's raining, I'm going to put my Ursac in the Dyneema dry bag, um, and then not hang it. So the, it's basically open, right? Because if you put your, the rope this way, then it's the, the rain is just going to come right into the bag. But turn it, twist it with the long rope and twist it in a tree, basically, and hang it upside down so that the rain hang, um, runs off the top of it. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, you know, like, you guys can feel free to leave your comments or like, oh my god, that's a totally crazy idea. But again, um, the amount of time that we're talking about me doing this is probably a handful, maybe 10, um, because most, again, most of the times if I'm not in a hostel hotel or in a, a shelter with a bear box or a bear cable, um, I'm not going to need to use that, worry about the rain system. I'll still use the dry bag just as an extra layer of critter protection, so I'll still put the air sack in, in the um, Dyneema bag. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my thought on how I'm going to rainproof the air sack. And then of course I have the op sack, um, for the smelly resistant, so that'll go in my air sack. And then for my electronics, 
All right, so starting with my iPhone. So I got a new iPhone this year, uh, Pro Max 14. Um, people who know me will laugh because I had a iPhone 7 used for years. I decided to upgrade for my hike um, so that I can actually vlog better, take better pictures, all that fun stuff. So iPhone Pro Max 14. And the cool thing too, right, like um, I was super excited. I had heard that this was happening with Apple. So the uh, new satellite connectivity for emergencies. Um, early reviews are really good. I, I People haven't obviously had a chance to use it in the green tunnel yet yet in an emergency situation, but um, people that have been using it out west and in other places, it's been really, really well received and worked really well. So I'm really excited to have the satellite connectivity. Um, it's the reason I decided not to take my Garmin in Reach Mini, and I know that's probably controversial because what, what, Wendy? It's not tested. You know, the Garmin in Reach Mini works everywhere. True, um, I'm probably taking a chance, but I decided not to take the, the Garmin, try the, the Apple satellite um, and when, for when I don't have cellular service, which is apparently probably 10% of the time on the AT. At least that's what I've read. So that's what I'm doing. And then some of the cool like electronic or apps that I'm going to be using on, on my phone. So um, I've actually was testing this out today. So I put on the um, mini cam, which allows you to like do the split screen on it. So like people that have iPhones, right, you can't actually vlog like video um, and then turn your camera around. Um, you have to stop filming and then turn your cam. So the mini cam app allows you to do that so you can see front and back and continue to film. So I decided to get that, which is really cool. I think a nice feature. Um, and then what was the other thing? Oh, and then of course, like far out, I'll be using far out, um, just like everybody else. Um, and then for my weather app, I really wish the atweather.com um, had an app. That'd be really cool. Like guys, if you're thinking about doing an app, that would be a huge help. So I think most people, most through hikers use that atweather, atweather.com. Um, and it works really well. It tells you all the different, it gives you a list of all the shelters and the weather there. Um, it's just, it's just a website right now, so there's not an app, but most people use it. Um, and then I will have a wall PDF on my phone. So rather than taking the a wall guide, um, which a lot of people do, they just cut out sections and, and mail themselves, you know, when they're, when they reach the next section, I just prefer the PDF. That's how I've been using it. And it's super convenient. You can just scroll and see where you are on the PDF. Um, and then there's also links to phone numbers if you want to do that. Um, I'll also have the whiteblaze.net PDF file for the 2023 uh, shuttle list of shuttle drivers on my phone. Um, the, my kind of daily planning. So I have like a PDF of, of each um, day kind of mapped out in advance of where I want to stop, what, what to see, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, and then I also downloaded the Peak Finder. So the, for those that don't know, the Peak Finder app, um, basically you hold it up uh, to the different mountain ranges and it identifies um, all the different peaks, mountain peaks in your vista. So that's really cool. Um, okay, so Moving right along, so I think that covers the the Apple, the the iPhone. Um, I did get a Nightcore um, uh, ten thousand milliamp. Um, I'm my my hiking strategy get uh, has me off trail pretty much every like other day, third day. I'm not going to be in the woods for a long time. You're on the AT. You're generally not in the woods for a long time, unlike the other long trails. Um, so this, I think, will cover my power supply totally fine. Um, I, I'm not going to be super vlogger um, and, you know, have half hour long videos every day. Um, so this should serve my power needs. I really like, again, I just put my initials on it in the, the uh, in the dark tape. So easily identifiable. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Vlogging stick. 
um, and tripod. So this is a pretty new um, company and so far I'm totally loving it. It's Shiftcam and they, it's, it's a magnetic lock um, system. So basically you put it on your phone like this and it stays, holds in place really well and it's just attached to your, you know, the magnetic part, part of your phone. Shake it around, doesn't come off. It moves like this, but that's fine. Um, and it also has a light, which is super cool. So I'm gonna take this off. Um, so you can have a light and it has different brightnesses. And that's awesome. So like if you're in your tent, right, and the lighting's terrible or you're just, it's really bad lighting, you can turn it on and use that. So um, I'm really loving this, this company. So it's Shift Cam. Um, they have another, there's a holder too, but, but I'm not taking that just because it's extra heavy that you can actually charge your phone when you're holding it as well. Um, just, I don't need that, so I'm not taking it. So I'm just taking the tripod. So right, this opens up into a tripod. I can do it like that. Um, and it holds your phone really well. And again, it's just a perfect size for a vlogging stick. So I really like it. Um, yeah, so shift cam. Oh, and um, I'll... All the stuff, I'll have, I guess I have a lighter pack, so that will be in the district description. Um, but this, I think, is with the light, it's about five ounces, so it's really light, too. It's just totally awesome. Uh, for my external mic, so I am taking an external mic just because I've been playing around, and the mic is so much better. Like, the sound quality coming out is just night, night and day. Like... And I know, like, watching so many vloggers, you know, the wind and the external noise, like, if they're talking to some, somebody or interviewing them, sometimes it's really hard to hear the other person because the way the, the microphone on their phone just doesn't pick them up. Or, of course, the wind. It's just, it's, it's you know, sometimes unwatchable, not unwatchable, but you know what I mean, it's just the sound quality is not there. So to try to fix that, I am taking the road... Um, mic, um, it's the uh, lightning edition, it's super light, it's like an ounce and a half, um, and then I do have the um, sound muffler, I'm not calling it a dead cat, I think that's a terrible name, so it'll be a sound muffler for me, and it works really well, like I um, tested it out the other day, and I mean the wind wasn't like 40 miles an hour, but it was probably 15, 20 miles an hour, and it, the sound quality was amazing. Um, so I'm happy with this so far. Again, how it goes on the AT, we'll see. But so far, Outback Australia, it's working really well. Oh, and then I do have, um, you have to get the little external clip in piece. Um, for the uh, for the mic to actually fit in the iPhone with the case. So my iPhone has a drop guys case, just a, you know, it's not an otter box, but it's a good compromise. But if you have any type of more robust case, you have to get the little adapter for the mic in order for it to fit in the case. And for my bag, um, so my electronics bag, the Lightsmith bag, it's just a Dyneema bag. Um, water resistant, nothing's waterproof. Um, I will probably put a, um, a packet in there as well, just to a silicone packet, just to keep, try to keep the humidity out as much as possible, which is probably an impossible task on the AT, but I'll try my best. Um, and then I just had a, um, my, my headphones, Love these Aftershock Aeroplex. They're just amazing. They're bone conductor headphones. Um, I've been a fan of these for a really long time. They're really lightweight, and of course, you can hear ambient noise, which is wonderful because you don't want to have, I don't think, noise canceling headphones on the trail. Um, so, love these. Um, they're great. Uh, and then, just series of electronics. Um, oh, my headlamp. I have a Nightcore headlamp. Um, I'll grab that. It's on. It's somewhere. Um, and then uh, my chart, my uh, plug. Uh, I think it's a Spitzel Spitzel. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but it'll be in my lighter pack. But it's got two USB charge, uh, USB C chargers on it. 
um, pretty lightweight. Um, that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, all right. Now, probably the, the, the missing link, the big piece of my gear um, that I was going to talk about that is not here. So I did stay up till, actually, I set my alarm to, to 1.15 in the morning uh, last Tuesday. Uh, and yes, had the website crash several times, but I was able to get a Durston one person mid pro, um, tent. So I was hoping that I was going to be fortunate enough to do that. And I did. So I'm super excited. Um, Dan, the man's going to be shipping them out in like two or three weeks, which means I will be getting it here. If all goes well. Um, by end of March, um, so that gives me like a month to do shakedown testing with the tent um, before I head back to the States. So I'm really excited to get the tent. I have a Z-Plex duplex, uh, Z-Pax duplex tent now, which is, which I like. It's fine. Um, I do find setting it up can be a pain in the butt, especially here in the outback. Um, it's either rock hard dirt or sand. Um, so you're either like having to jam in the stakes with a, with a rock um, and trying to get a perfect pitch is just very difficult or it's sandy and everything collapses. So not that I don't, not, I think any um, single wall tent you're going to have a problem with that anyway, but um, having the trekking poles in the middle of the tent and having to have them a certain height um, I'm short, so I have the women's trekking poles, which actually don't accommodate um, a lot of the Z-Plex tents. Um, so that's kind of a roundabout way of saying I'm excited for this new tent. Um, you know, the two-person mid-pro has gotten amazing reviews from people. Um, you know, any single wall tent, you're still going to have the same condensation problems, um, but especially on the Appalachian Trail. But I'm willing to sacrifice that. I'm, I, I'm, I am again. I'm, I'm, I'm little. I'm five three. I, I think a one person tent will be plenty of room for what I need. Um, and then my my stakes. I have Z packs, um, groundhog tents. Uh, I'll take it out. It's, but yeah, I've got six of these guys. They're lightweight. Um, they work really well. And that's why I'm just going to keep using those. Um, I'm not going to get a footprint. I was thinking about it. Um, Durston has a footprint. Uh, I just, I've kind of hemmed and hawed about it, but I don't think I'm going to get one. Hopefully I won't need one. All right, so headlamp, last piece of electronics. Um, so I did get the Nightcore um, headlamp, and I did create the little uh, <laughs> weight savings uh, paracord thing going on so there's like tutorials on YouTube. YouTube is amazing for anything you want to learn about. <laughs> it's kind of scary but it's true. Um, so yes yeah, so I created the little uh, weight savings uh, head, head strap. Um, so it works great. Really like it. Happy with it. So I have that. Oh, and what I want, other thing I wanted to mention about the earth sack. Um, I, 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 I know me and my patience to try to do a bear hang every night, it, it, not there, especially like after being hot and tired and sweaty, the last thing I want to do is try to spend a half hour finding a tree and making sure that my hang is correct. So, um, that's my other reason for going with the sack and, you know, everybody's gear is personal and it what works for them and hopefully it works for me and if it doesn't I will be the first to say oh my god this this is terrible um so all right that's gear video part one um part two will be coming in a few days and again thank you for watching and uh make sure to like and subscribe if you want to or if you don't <laughs> that's okay too but um Thanks again, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.